Hi everyone, hopefully you can hear me, hopefully you can see my screen. I'm looking at Anna's and I can see it there, so it's great. Um, I thought I'd just pick up on, uh, I'm focusing really just staying with, with uh, cable, with bridge pound, um, seeing as that's really the focus this morning. And on the daily chart, just I, I wanted to show you a couple of things here um, on the daily time frame. And all I've got here, I've got volume at the bottom, I've got tick volume at the bottom, and I have the accumulation distribution indicator at the top. As I say, this is the daily time frame. Anna's talked about anomalies, and you've got this anomaly here. You can see the volume here. When you're looking at VPA, what you're looking at is really uh, the I would you always look for the extremes because that's where your eye is drawn. The first place you look is for those ultra high levels and those ultra low levels because they stand out, they jump off the off the off the chart at you. And this came in uh, four days ago. Uh, we've got a wick to the top of the candle. Very narrow body, lots of volume going in. So instantly it tells you this is an anomaly. It has to be an anomaly because otherwise this candle should have ended up right up here somewhere because with that level of volume, and it's all about benchmarking when you're looking at, uh, at the charts. You're, you're, you're trying to benchmark the, the volume that you're comparing with similar volume. Now, when you're looking at a daily chart, we can compare right the way across here because this is all the same time frame, the same session. Obviously, when you're looking at different sessions, when you're looking from an intraday basis, that's not always possible. You have to compare within the session. So if you're looking at the London session, you compare within the London session. If you're looking at the US session, you compare within the US session. And similarly, in the Far East session, it's always comparative with session. But when you're looking at a daily chart or weekly or monthly, it doesn't matter. The only thing you've got to be aware of is when you go to holiday periods like here, this is Monday, the 2nd of January. Now, clearly, markets are on holiday, generally speaking. So you expect to see low volume. So you always have to bear that in mind when you get holidays, big US national holidays, three day weekends, uh, obviously Christmas, Easter, these sorts of these sorts of holidays. You've got to take that into account and not just something. Oh, great. You know, low volume, whatever. There is a seasonality to volume as well. But in the last four days, we've got this anomaly. So we've seen weakness here on the daily chart time frame. No great surprise to see it meandering through this level. The reason I put the accumulation distribution indicator on is because it just lays these levels out for you. It's such a clean indicator. It gives you an instant visual perspective on all the strong levels and the less strong levels. And it gives you this nomenclature up here. So these little numbers tell you how often each one's been tested, how often it's found support, how often it's found resistance. And this is these are the key levels. We've got one up here at three, which is up here in the sort of 25 area, one, one, one spot 25. And then we have this other area here, which is currently being tested and has been tested in the last three days at just below 123. So given you've got uh, some pretty strong resistance there, these other levels here, these minor levels, the uh, the fact that they are, are a very faint dotted lines means that they've probably only been tested once and are therefore minor. That said, when you get clusters of them together like this, that implies strength because when you get at two or three or four of these together, that simply adds weight. Like here, for example, you've got a two, but you've also got some others around it. So it's adding extra weight to that resistance area. So you've got the anomaly. You've got the anomaly here. It's no great surprise to see the market pausing here. And these are really the ranges. You've got the level up here and the level down here. So cable is currently trading in a range. Now, going right back over here, this was September. We were actually on holiday at the time. We were in a wonderful part of Tuscany. It was beautiful sunshine, lovely um, on the marina. And we were short, heavily short. And then this happened. And the reason we instantly reversed our positions on the day was because this also coincided with another important facet of market news, if you will, which when a market appears in the mainstream headlines and it appeared in all sorts of newspapers, just the mainstream media, I mean, the everyday popular press, once the popular press starts reporting on market news, financial market news, you can almost guarantee that the market is going to reverse because the headlines at this point were screaming out, uh, 
the collapse in the pound it's terrible um you know that the pound is being trashed it's it's all down to you know the british prime minister at the time and all the rest of it it was total nonsense but when you see this occurring you can be assured that once a news item is in the financial press you want to do the exact opposite it's hard because the news, all the news channels will be reporting the same thing. They'll all be screaming the headlines, but that's what you have to learn to do. It doesn't matter whether it's in Forex, as it was in this case with the pound, or whether it's in uh, commodities, or gold is another typical one where you see you know, screaming headlines about the, the gold is going to the moon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, everyone's piling into gold. What happens? Instantly reverses. So, you know, this is where we got in long, major long on the pound, and we've been holding that pretty strongly ever since. We're now in congestion on the, on the slower time frame, and it's really a question of looking at levels. And the way you look at this is it, this could be a one minute chart. It makes absolutely no difference how you approach technical analysis. It's just a different time frame. And all we're looking at here is congestion. So we've got our levels set. We've got a level here and level here. Once it breaks out from this congestion phase, which is going to be extended, but as I say, this could be a one minute, could be a five minute time frame, makes no difference. The principles are the same. Once it breaks out of that congestion channel, uh, it's probably going to trend uh, more strongly. And that's what you're looking for. And then that obviously any trend breakaway will be confirmed with volume. The thing I love about TradingView, one of many things is not least, obviously, it's uh, a browser-based platform, so you can use it on any device. I mentioned Ninja Trader uh, earlier on. I'll show you that in a moment. But because it's browser-based, you can use it on Windows platforms. You can use it on a Mac. You can use it on a mobile. Any anything you like. Fantastic. But you also get these little uh, headline clips come in all the time. You just click on that, and it shows you what's going on in terms of headlines for that particular uh, program uh, for that particular pair. Hold on one moment. Sorry, Anna's just drawn my attention to someone's just left a message on the chat about the trend monitor. Uh, I haven't got it on here, but let me add it on anyway. Um, just pop up here. Where are we? Trend monitor. Da, 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 da. Trend monitor 2021. There we go. Pop that on. That appears down the bottom there. The trend monitor is is a, it's a wonderful indicator, and it's and it's we developed it with one concept in mind and it's always used in multiple time frames it's never used in isolation because what you're looking for over typically three phases of price action you are looking for the trend development through the prism of the trend monitor the trend monitor looks at price action over a relatively considered view it's very different from the trends indicator, which works very close to the price action. The trend monitor takes a more considered view. It looks at it over a slower time horizon and therefore will change more slowly. But the primary function of the trend monitor is to help to keep you in a trade once it starts to develop. So it will tend to only change color into the transitional colors. These transitional colors of darker red and darker blue once it notices that a trend has perhaps changed. And this is a classic example, if you like. We saw this trend, it was going on and on and on. There's no change on the trend monitor here. It hasn't changed. Then you start to see the volume come in. Now, at this point, you might say, well, the trend's already changed. It has. But what the trend monitor is doing is it's actually considering that first before actually signaling a transitional change here. Then it goes into bright, into darker red, it does transition back to bright red at that point, but it comes back again into dark blue very quickly thereafter. And then it starts to transition into bright blue and basically saying, we are now in a point where the trend has truly changed significantly. And that's the reason that you use it in multiple timeframes, never in one, always in three, because you want to see this going on in your fastest time frame. So if, if this, for example, was a one minute, three minute, five minute combination, the first place you would see it occurring would be on your one minute time frame. If it's a true change in trend, it will ripple through into your three minute. And ultimately, that uh, trend, if it's continuing, will go through across into your five minute time horizon and on up. The analogy I've used many, many times before, I'm sure you've heard it, is dropping a pebble in a pond. It is literally like that. It is, the, it is rippling the effect from the fastest time frame that you're using out 
into your slower time frames. And in addition to that, in fact, if I just pull this up a little bit, move that up there. In addition to that, it's really two indicators in one because you have this trend line here as well, which is really showing you the extreme of the trend itself. And once it starts to uh, reverse, then it starts to move back to the midpoint line and climb above it. So you've got two indicators in one. You've got the trend line itself and you've got the trend monitor. But I stress the point, only ever use it in multiple time frames. Never, ever on its own. Uh, very quickly, let me just... Um, I've got cryptocurrencies up here as well. This is another extremely popular indicator. I've got, again, this is cable. What we've got here is we've got four time frames. I've got the one minute. We're on the fast time frame now. So we've gone literally from daily up to uh, intraday. We've got the one minute here. We've got the two minute here. We've got the three minute and the four minute, a uh, five minute rather. So this is cable again. This is on the pound dollar. What I've got below is the Renko indicator that we developed for TradingView, which is two indicators in one. And I'm not going to show you the standard one because it's a standard Renko indicator. What I'm showing you here is what we call the um, price. It, this is matched to the price. When you're looking at a, a Renko indicator, because Renko is independent of price, it's very hard to actually identify where a price action has taken place and where it is uh, associated with the price action. It's, you can't tie the two together because Renko is independent of, of, of time because every Renko brick will be built in the time it takes to move that price action. So if you set the brick size at two pips, let's say, if those two pips move in a second, then that's when the brick will build. But that could take five seconds. It could take 10 seconds. It could take 20 seconds. And that's why a Renko is independent of time. So when you go into this particular version of it, we call it the time accurate. And it's here. So you've got the standard there or you've got the time accurate. And what you're looking at here is time accurate. And the difference is that with the time accurate Renko, it builds these lovely bricks which are associated precisely with the price action. So this brick is associated with this price action, as is this one, as is this one, as is this one. So you're basically matched at the front end. And it develops this very different style of a Renko. Uh, much more, it's less noisy, as you can see. And again, the same principles I was talking about um, multiple time frames. Well, here we're using multiple time frames with the Renko. And again, the principles are the same. If we have the trend monitor on here, we look at our fastest. What's going on in terms of our fastest? Well, we had a little rally here. We had a few green bricks came in, but we've reverted back to red. If we go over to our two minute, yeah, we had a couple of green bricks come in, but we're definitely in red and we've been in solid red ever since uh, for some time. If we go down onto our slower time frame of three minute here, we've only got two green bricks here. We're saying very much solidly red for the time being. And finally, down onto our five minute time frame, which is our slowest, we have no green bricks at all. And that's really the principle of multiple time frames, whether you're looking at it from a Renko perspective as we are here, whether you're looking at it from a trend monist perspective, whether you're looking at it from a trends perspective, indeed, whether you're looking at it from an indicator perspective, the principle is the same. You will see changes going on on your one minute time frame. And if there is going to be a true change in the sentiment or the trend, if you like, then that ultimately will move across into this time frame down onto that time frame and finally through onto this time frame. But as you can see at the moment, you know, that is not the case. This is what we've got on our five minutes. There is no significant change in trend that is being represented at the moment. We have this very solid move higher, quite slow, quite sluggish, but it basically got up here. Then we get the change and now we're stepping down with these bricks. And as you can see, it's a very different arrangement to a typical Renko. I'll show you the Renko over on Ninja, which is the conventional Renko, the, the Renko Ninja Trader version, where you get the bricks which are constantly moving higher and lower. With the time accurate Renko, 
it's very much like um, building a wall, if you like. So you get these little walls built all the time. Then we get another little one. Then we go down a bit. Okay, now we're into wall again. Then we're down again. It's, you know, it's hopping around here. It's trying to decide what's going on, whether to close the brick here or we, you know, continue sideways and we're going to drop down another level. So if you find Renko noisy as an indicator and you want to get involved in uh, using a Renko, I would suggest that this time accurate version is a very considered way of getting into uh, the Renko charting application per se, but doing it in actually quite a conservative way. It's a very steady way. You can see it doesn't jump about. It's very considered. It doesn't frighten the life out of you. And as I say, it's two indicators in one. And if you want to swap back to the other one, it's very straightforward. Just go into settings and you just do it up there and you can flick back to the standard one. But I wanted to show you that because um, it's unique as far as we know. No one else has developed anything that, that that's even comes anywhere close. And I have to say, we're very proud of it. It's also very popular. I've got to say that the Renko Trading View is uh, is probably one of our best-selling indicators, bar none. Oh, sorry, I have the chat box closed off when I'm in full flow. Apologies. Um, where are we? Let's go down to the bottom. Let's scroll down. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Jake, does the does the chart layout using their work with ATR based Renko? This is this is uh, ATR based. Let me just go in here. Um, this is uh, you can see the ATR length here. You're at liberty to change that uh, to whatever you wish, and that's all explained in the support page um, on for the Trading View indicator itself. So yeah, by all means. Um, this is one of several ATR indicators that we use because average true range is a great uh, metric for developing indicators. So I hope you found that useful. Um, let me just drop that out of the way. This is, this is the workspace I was on uh, earlier. Um, these are fast time frames. I've got the one minute for the CSI, the currency strength, the three minute here, and I've got the five minute. And again, you know, staying on the theme of multiple time frames, it's so important to use multiple time frames, whether you're using it here, as in the currency strength indicator, whether you're using it things like the matrix here, or whether you're using it in charting, it's all about using multiple time frames. You can see the dollar here is is pretty strong. It's been rising. There we go. go pull it right the way back. It's been rising uh, pretty steadily. I've got the matrix here on the right hand side. I've got the one minute here and the five minute the if we just isolate out just see what's going on because the what you're looking for in the matrix is you're looking for sentiment you're looking for the flow is the currency that i am or the currency pair that i'm looking to trade what is the the flow of that is the flow universal towards that particular currency in terms of the dollar and in which and in that case which is the strongest pair that i should be looking at now you can see down at the bottom in terms of the strongest and bear in mind this is one minute so you know this is pretty quick here so why is the new zealand dollar down at the bottom here in other words that is moving the most strongly at present well it's because we've got the dollar up here on one minute and the new zealand the gray line here is falling pretty strongly so that's what you're always looking for in terms of the currency strength you're looking for the strongest divergence between the two currencies the individual currencies that you're considering you're looking for one that is rising strongly and one that is falling strongly so we've got the dollar up here yes it's up into uh, pretty strongly uh, overbought it's moving ever high here it's still up here and it's moving firmly higher here new zealand's kinked over and it's now dropping this is on five minute remember so you know that's the reason you're seeing that. Now what's interesting obviously about this, what we want to see, if we go over here onto the, uh, what was this one, the five minute? Yeah, the five minute. We click on the dollar over here, we'll just isolate out the dollar and see what's going on. What do you want to see on the matrix? And I'll show you the array, which is the slower uh, look at um, this whole business of sentiment and how it is associated with a particular currency and a matrix of currencies. What you're looking for all the time is if I'm trading the dollar, is the dollar being bought or sold universally? In other words, 
if it's the counter currency here, you want to see the euro dollar moving down here. We've got a nice group of three down here at the bottom. So that's pretty much confirming the fact as far as those three currency pairs are concerned. But you really want to see the dollar move down in terms of the euro. You want to see if the dollar is being bought, then you want to see the dollar yen rising. You want to see the dollar CAD rising and you want to see the dollar Swiss rising. So you have got universal sentiment in terms of this group and this group. But ultimately, for this to be confirmed, because it's not so it's not so strong in terms of the dollar CAD, for example, certainly in terms of dollar yen, which is sitting mid table and the same with the euro dollar. And when you look at the uh, the currency strength indicator, that is really confirmed because this is the euro here. I'll just pull this over a little bit. Sorry, let's pull it over a little bit. There we go. The euro. Um, the reason that the euro dollar is sitting in this sort of mid table position on that sort of time horizon is because the dollar and the euro are moving pretty much in the same direction. And therefore, there isn't much directional bias in terms of sentiment driving that particular pair. It may be moving vaguely higher or vaguely lower. I couldn't tell you without looking at it, probably marginally higher. But there isn't any divergence of strength between these two currencies. And that's what you're seeing reflected on the matrix. Now, what you're also seeing now is you're starting to see this drop down. Um, and as Anna said, she mentioned it uh, right back at the start of the, uh, of the of the webinar. What we've got on here, it also tells us the lowest and the highest ranges. So we don't have to worry about remembering. You can see up here, this was the highest was uh, 1551. Uh, we're actually running at six at the moment. So it's pretty low. It's pretty, uh, it's well off the highs. And this is the average here as well. So it gives you a sense of, you know, the, the highs and lows, what is going on in terms of, um, are we reaching a range? And you can think of the matrix in the same way that you do the currency strength indicator when you're looking at the extremes here. We're looking at the overbought, we're looking at the oversold. CAD's very, very oversold on the five minute time frame for the CSI. So when you look at the currency matrix, you can consider it in the same way as the tops and bottoms in terms of overbought and oversold. I'll just put all that back on again, see what's going on in terms of the pound. A kind of mixed picture on the pound as well. You know, it's not universally strong, not universally weak. Um, so the takeaway from all this is when you're trading a particular pair, ideally what you want to be doing is you want to be trading with the universal flow. So you want to see everybody buying the pound or everybody buying the dollar across the matrix of seven pairs, because if they're not, you can trade one in isolation and it happens all the time. You see a political event in the UK, for example, which directly impacts the pound and you'll see cable jump or cable drop, whatever. Um, and that's perfectly fine when all the other dollar pairs are actually moving perhaps in the opposite direction or maybe going nowhere. But that's the sort of information that you're trying to draw out. Now, the thing with the matrix, let me just pop these back on again. There we go. The the reason I've isolated these out and these are on fast time frames is because the currency matrix and the currency array, which I'll go on to in a moment, this is what I call a, a scalping uh, setup, if you like, because we've got fast time frames, got one, three and five, and we've got the uh, we've got the matrix on one and five as well. The matrix is a scalping tool. And the reason it's a scalping tool is because if I go into the back end, <coughs> let's click on the indicators here, onto the matrix. The look back period here is seven. Now that's a very short look back period. So it is literally looking back over the previous seven sessions. So that'd be seven minutes, seven hours, seven days, whatever it is. So it is it is very much a scalping tool. And the analogy I always use if going back to the trend monitor and the trends indicator, which are sister indicators, the currency matrix and the currency array, which I'll show you in a moment, are also sister indicators. The matrix is used for scalping because it has a short look back period. The array is used for trend trading because it has a much longer look back period. And that's the same principle that applies to the trend monitor and the trends indicator. Trends works close to the price action. Matrix works close to the price action. Currency away, array works very uh, with a much longer look back period. The trend monitor takes a much more considered view of the price as well. Excuse me a minute. I'm just going to clear my throat. Sorry about that. Right. Before we move on, 
And I'm just watching what's going on. You can see there's a lot of yen buying coming in. There's yen buying here, yen buying here. So strong moves in the yen. So if we just very quickly isolate out on the yen. Look at that. That's on a one minute time frame. Now that's what I was talking about. This is what I call a full house. You've got all those currency pairs are absolutely stacked to the bottom. Tells you one thing, the market is buying yen universally. There's no question about it. There's no divergence. There's no spread. Uh, everything is sat down at the bottom, in the bottom of the pool there. It's just isolated out on five. You've got exactly the same on five. So if you're trading a yen pair right now, you are absolutely 100% guaranteed that the sentiment of yen is yen buying across the entire complex. Now that may only last a few minutes, but the fact of the matter is if you're trading a yen pair right now, great confidence builder, that's what you're looking for, just really makes the point. Let's click those back on again. Let me just show you this at the bottom. This is um, an interesting little uh, window that comes with um, Ninja Trader. And what it's showing us is the correlation between the currency pairs on a matrix. I've got this selected on the hour, but you can change it to slower. But if I show you the hour to start with, so when you look at majors, for example, if you look at the Aussie dollar, how does that uh, correlate with Euro? It doesn't. Does it correlate with cable? Kind of. The um, the benchmark I use, and it's really only a rule of thumb, is other people may put this higher, but I look at about 0.8. When you get to a correlation of about 0.8, you can say, yeah, okay, there is a correlation there. And really anything below that, meaningfully below that, there isn't really any correlation to speak of. So when you look at Aussie dollar, there's really no correlation with euro. Yeah, just about with cable on the hour. Uh, dollar CAD, that's inverse because obviously the dollar is the primary currency, it's not the counter currency, so you get the inverse correlation. So yeah, it's pretty much the same as cable. A dollar Swiss, yeah, so those three are okay, but in terms of euro, it, it's nowhere near. If you look at euro dollar, uh, how does that, well, you get the inverse of that, we had that over there, 51, 51, so it doesn't really correlate at all. Let's have a look at um, pound, 61, okay really no correlation there at all and really no correlation there at all either, which is quite interesting because when you look at typically euro dollar and dollar Swiss, they will tend to, or the correlation has always been very close, they, they correlate inversely, um, but they're really very little there at the moment. So it's just an interesting tool if we go over on, and the point is that correlations come and go the whole time. Now, these will change literally hour by hour. If you looked at this at the end of the day, you might find that all the majors are now correlating strongly. Could be, could be not. Uh, equally, you know, look at the look at the yen pairs. What's happening with euro yen? Is that correlating to um, dollar yen? No, not at all. Uh, so it's it's just a, a, an interesting little exercise. And if you go on to the daily, how does that compare? Is there a more meaningful correlation? Yeah. If you look at Aussie dollar cable, 0.9 strong correlation, decent correlation here with euro dollar, not really very good with dollar CAD. So it's just a, an interesting little exercise and there are uh, other tools out there on the internet for doing the same sort of thing. Now, if I just go back onto uh, what I mentioned earlier on, which was the, uh, where are we, the trend one. There we go, right, okay. Here we are on trend. Okay, so we're on slower time frames now. I've got, um, this is all cable, I've got five and 15, five and 15. So you, it's it's a mirror image. The reason I've split it out is because I've got the volume point of control on this one, on these two time frames. I've got the accumulation distribution indicator on the bottom here on these two. So it's, and you can see the, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier about the trend monitor, I've got the trend monitor on here and you can see, really holding you in that particular trade. And that's why we developed it. Because the number one problem for any trader, it doesn't matter if you're a trader, investor, what it is, is actually staying in a position. Once you've got a decent position in the market, you have to hold that position. And that's why we developed this indicator. We went straight through from blue. We didn't even go into dark blue here. We've gone straight through into dark red and out the other side into bright red. And through all these little phases of price action where you get pause points, basically the trend monitor is saying, no, 
I'm quite confident that we're still staying in, in uh, negative territory here. We're still trading with a, uh, a bearish bias, so I'm not going to transition. Now, if you had this on the one minute, I can assure you it probably would have done. And that's the whole reason for using it in multiple time frames. Just pop that down. And if we go on to the 15 minute, there we did have some transitional changes. We went into darker red. We went into darker blue. We even transitioned back into a darker red here for a little bit. But now we've come out the other side. Now, obviously, the other aspect that we now got to consider here is we are now down on the volume point of control on 15 minute, which is going to be a serious well, you can tell here just purely from the price action this is going to be a serious uh, support point so if you were short at the moment and holding to those sorts of time frames you'd probably want to take your profits off the table right now or certainly close most of the position at any rate because you know for a fact we're going to pause here because we've got congestion and if i pop down here onto the, exactly the same chart and all i've got here is the accumulation distribution indicator this is a very very strong area so is it any wonder that is pausing. No, you've got a double reason it's pausing. You've got the accumulation distribution indicator and you've also got the VPOC. So it just gives you all that confidence to say, okay, fine, I've had a nice ride down, take some money out of the market. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, you know, as I say, either close out completely or if you're trading multiple lots, then take uh, a proportion of those lots off the table and just sit tight because the market i can assure you will congest on those sorts of time frames this is the currency array very different to the matrix it might look the same but the point is that if i go into the back end again look at the difference in the look back period it's 80 and that's the big difference because what the trend, what the currency array is trying to do is to give you a sense of trend, of holding a trend for the longer term time frame. Let's just click off uh, isolate out on pound. That'll isolate out on here. And what it does is it gives you this wonderful visual perspective. And in fact, if I isolate out on the yens, it'll probably show you this even better because the yen is always the counter currency. Now, what we're looking for on the yen, uh, we saw it on the matrix. We saw that very strong buying of the yen. You can see it on here. I'm not sure what time frame this is. That's on 15. OK, we've got this very strong buying of the yen here. Now, if we've got a strong buying of the yen, you know, that's telling us what? It's telling us it's risk off at the moment. So if you're looking at indices, I can assure you they'd be probably falling right now. It tells you which are the strongest in terms of the trend because it gives you this visual. So we know without going anywhere else that Swiss yen, CAD yen are the two strongest at the moment in terms of trend. We don't need to look at a chart. It just tells us straight away. What will also occur on this particular array indicator is that if this trend of this yen buying is going to continue across the complex, ultimately you will see all these pairs sweep down to join these two at the bottom these are the two that are moving the most strongly they're down here on the bottom but if these two uh, also if the if the remaining pairs also continue with that theme of yen buying then these uh, lines will sweep down and the they will uh, join their brothers and sisters down at the bottom and make a full house now i don't know what time frame that may be again you'd have the currency array set up in the various time frames you're looking at but again, this is what this indicator is all about. Now, in addition to the matrix, what this also does, it also signals to you potentially over, overbought and oversold regions. When it goes into brackets here, it's telling you it's potentially oversold. If that moves to a, an oversold condition or considered oversold condition, that will change to bright red. Similarly, up at the top here, you'll get potentially overbought signals, which are these darker blue with the brackets around. If it goes to bright blue with no brackets, it's telling you it's potentially overbought. It's not a signal to get in and get out. It's a signal to tell you to go and look at the chart. If you haven't got the chart, go and look at it because it may be an opportunity for you to, to trade that particular opportunity. That's the currency array. That's how to use it in multiple time frames in the same way, but to stress it again, it is a trend indicator, whereas the matrix is a scalping indicator. So the matrix is for scalping. This a current, The currency array is very much for where you are a swing or trend trader and you want to stay in for the longer term. 
Now I've got a lot more I could show you, but we'll do that next time because uh, I have gone way, way over time. So apologies for that. Uh, but then we always tend to, there we go back to onto our uh, Renko here. You can see, you know, we've got some little green bricks here formed on the on the box. We've got four here. We've got, what have we got here? Eight or nine over here, but we've got none down here and none down here. So it really tells you all you need to know. Basically saying, stick with the trend for the time being, because unless this starts to change in any particular way, particularly down on these slower time frames, then for the time being, you know, stay short British pound. But remember what I showed you on the chart, on the, on the charts earlier on, on NinjaTrader, the, uh, we're moving into VPOC area and we're moving into strong uh, uh, potential support area as well. Yeah, sorry, were there any other questions there? Uh, but, 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 uh, let's have a look, just scroll down. Aren't you using multiple time frames for QCSI? Yes, indeed. Um, uh, exactly the same way. Multiple time frames, Jake, are placed on everything. It doesn't matter whether it's an indicator whether it's a chart, we use multiple time frames. Typically, we use three for everything. Uh, in other words, putting crudely, slow, medium, and fast, if you like. The analogy I use is always the uh, the, the, the highway, uh, the three-lane highway, three-lane motorway. You've got fast track traffic on one side. You've got slow traffic on the other. You're sitting in the middle lane. You've got wing mirrors on your car, and you can see what's going on both sides of the of your of where you're driving. It's pretty much the same thing here. And your trading setup, if you like, is where you take trades. It's generally speaking off the middle screen, whatever that time frame may be, whether it's a one, three, five minute combo, or whether it's a, an hour, four hour daily, whatever it is. Exactly the same principles apply. Right, very quickly, just to wrap up, uh, where are we? Where are we? Are we? Um, this is the new Ninja Trader site. It's very exciting. Um, as I say, I am going to subscribe to uh, their brokerage account because that way I get to access the um, the browser-based browser -based version of Ninja. But hop over there if uh, futures and um, uh, you know stocks and all sorts of uh, goodies, bond trading, everything else is 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 uh, you know where you're get, where you're heading in the future. Then you know this was only launched three weeks ago. So it's very exciting. As I say, it now means we can run on Mac, which is wonderful. We can run on iOS devices, which is even better on iPads and all the rest of it, phones. It's brilliant. So it's just a great, great uh, move forward for Ninja Trader. Very exciting. Uh, this is us, Quantum Trading. This is where you'll find all the indicators uh, for MT45, Ninja Trader 7.8, TradingView, and TradeStation. They're all there. Uh, whether you buy one or the bundle, you get exactly the same levels of support from us. It doesn't, we don't differentiate. Um, so you're just as important as a customer to, to us. If you buy one indicator, never, if you bought one in the past, doesn't matter when, we've been going over 10 years now. You could have bought one from us eight, nine, 10 years ago. If you want to upgrade, buy a bundle, upgrade to the education program, we will always credit you with whatever you spent with us in the past. So you never lose out. If you want to transfer from platforms, you never lose out because um, you've invested with us. So why would we not allow you to move to another platform free of charge? That's what we do. We make it happen. So you start with maybe MT4 or Trading View, and then you want to move to Ninja. No problem. The only time you pay is if there is a differential in price. For example, TradeStation is slightly more expensive uh, than some of the other platforms because it has radar panel in there. Ninja Trader is a little bit more expensive because it has tick uh, volume in there. So you've got a, the tick speedometer in there. Um, but other than that, you don't pay us a flat fee in, in order to, to transfer from one to the other. So your investment's always protected and you get 24 seven support. As I mentioned at the start, if you invest in the full set of, of indicators, you get all the new ones free. So if you're a Ninja Trader customer, I know we've got some here at the moment who've got the full package. One we, once we roll those out, you will get those added automatically to your bundle of packages. This is Anna, AnnaCooling.com. You'll find her here with uh, all her analysis down the left-hand side here. You'll find all the Facebook pages. There's Forex-specific pa Facebook pages. and stock-specific Facebook pages down the bottom here as well. Um, and in addition, of course, you've got all the books across here, which I have to say, it's very humbling to see. I flashed that up earlier on just now. Um, there's over 3,000 uh, reviews of the volume book. It sells around the world in both paperback and Kindle. 
Um, it's just been an amazing, and it's very humbling to read the comments, I can assure you, under there as well, where traders find it and they find it, it just helps. And the beauty of volume price analysis is you can apply it to any methodology you like. If you're, um, you can integrate it. If you're a, um, a Fibonacci trader, integrate volume. If you're a, um, I can't think of the others, um, Elliott Wave, integrate volume. If you've been successful with Elliott Wave, but maybe you've been struggling a bit, integrate volume. It's just a fantastic methodology that underpins everything. Uh, that's a new website um, that's under development right now. This is us, um, new pictures and all that and uh, everything else. But that's we're very excited about this. I have to say it has taken us almost as long to develop as the Forex program. Um, it's going on, uh, will be going on about 18 months by the time we roll it out. Uh, to, co it's, to say it's comprehensive, again, is an understatement. It's a massive program. Uh, it covers both trading and investing in stocks. We go into the bond markets in huge detail. I think there's 20 PDFs we've developed for it. Options is a huge part of it uh, because options are so popular nowadays, uh, particularly stock options, as you can appreciate. Uh, lots on index, index futures, how to trade the bond markets and huge pieces on the Fed, the importance of understanding the Fed, what we call the Fed plumbing um, and so on. There's a massive amount. ETFs in particular takes a big, big part of the program too. how to create portfolios. Um, it's it's huge. Um, so we're looking, you know, we're really excited to roll that out, but it has been a massive undertaking as as in all the programs that we develop. But that's uh, that's where it's coming to. This is the current education program, quantumtradingeducation.com, uh, where you can join the Forex program, um, where you get all the indicators. So you get a full package of indicators plus all the, um, the complete program. Plus, it gives you automatic entry if you wish. It's optional to join the funded program where basically you are trading our money. You're not trading your money. You keep your money safe. Uh, as it says there, why risk your money when you can use ours? And basically, that sums it up. Uh, there is an entry fee. Um, it's a one-off fee. That's it. You don't pay any more and you can't lose any more than that. That's what. That's your entry ticket, if you like. Uh, it's... Uh, $425 for the $5,000 account, $10,000, or you start with $15,000. You choose, you join the program, and then you can work your way also all the way up to $1 and $2 million sized accounts. You just, there are targets all the way up. In addition to that, you get kickback of earnings, 50 and 60% of profits are kicked back to you as you earn and uh, create your own profit. So it's a win-win. And basically what happens is once you go through each level, if you start with 15,000, we then quadruple that size of your account. So you, if you start with 15, we give you 60,000 to play with. And once you've done that, then we double it thereafter, right the way up to 2 million. So from 60, you go to 120,000, 240,000. It's a great program. It's only the one-off fit. And you keep your own money safe and you trade your own account with your money. That's it. I think I've covered everything. Hopefully I've answered all the questions. Thank you so much for coming along today. Really appreciate it. We will be back with you on Thursday evening UK time, I think, with the stock trading and investing program. So stay safe. Enjoy the markets. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today. And just to, to confirm, this will be going up on YouTube as, uh, as recorded in due course, probably over the next day or two. So you will find it there. So thanks again. See you soon. And Bye for now.